In this video, I'm going to show you how to calculate a company's return on invested capital. Now, there are actually several different ways to calculate the return on invested capital, but each way is a variation of this basic formula. You take some measure of the company's profit, which could be notepad, it could be earnings before interest and taxes, and you divide it by the amount of invested capital. So for example, let's say we had a company called Umbrella Hats, and they had a profit of $5 million, and they had invested capital of $100 million. Okay, so we just take the $5 million of profit, we divide it by the $100 million of invested capital, which yields 0 0.05, expressed as a percentage, 5%. Okay, so the return on invested capital for that company would be 5%. But here's the catch. How do we measure profit and how do we measure invested capital? Well, let's start with profit. Okay, some people will use net income. Some people use EBIT. Some people use NOPAT, which is net operating profit after taxes. And some people use NOPLAT. Okay, so there are several different ways that you can measure profit when calculating the return on invested capital. Now, these measures are interrelated. For example, NOPAT can actually be calculated from EBIT, okay? If you take a company's uh, earnings before interest and taxes, multiply it by one uh, minus the tax rate, you get the company's no PAT. And uh, also no PLAT, okay? N net operating profit less adjusted taxes is just the company's no PAT plus the increase in deferred taxes, okay? Now, when it comes to invested capital, there are multiple ways to calculate that as well. For example, the most basic way is you could just take the average of the company's debt and stockholders equity. But some people will take the average of the debt and stockholders equity and then subtract cash and cash equivalents. Other people will say, okay, I want the average of debt and equity, but common stockholders equity. Okay, so that wouldn't include, for example, preferred equity. So the average of debt and common stockholders equity minus cash and cash equivalents. So you see, these are just three different ways that you could go about calculating invested capital. So again, there is no single way to calculate return on invested capital. So I wanna show you several different examples of how it could be calculated. Let's start with the consulting firm McKinsey. In their book on valuation, McKinsey calculated the return on invested capital as being equal to no plat divided by the company's invested capital, where invested capital was basically the sum of the company's property, plant, and equipment, and its working capital. So that's just one way to calculate the return on invested capital. But the Wall Street Journal ran an article on return on invested capital, and they provided a different formula. So in their formula, in the numerator for the profit measure, they've got earnings before interest and taxes times one minus the tax rate, which is equivalent to no PAT. So they had no PAT in the numerator, and then in the denominator for the invested capital measure, they had the sum of debt and equity minus the company's cash and cash equivalents. Okay, now the company Pepsi, they also calculate the return on invested capital and they disclose the formula for doing that in their 10K. And so for them, their profit measure in the numerator, they take the company's net income and then they add the after-tax interest expense. And then for invested capital in the denominator, they had the average debt and the average common shareholders equity. Now the company Target, the retailer, they had a more complicated formula, particularly when it came to invested capital. So in the numerator, they just had no PAT, but then in the denominator, they had long-term debt, which was both the current portion of long-term debt and non-current portion, plus shareholders investment, plus operating lease liabilities, and then they subtracted cash and cash equivalents. So this might be a little confusing because you say, hey, there's all these different ways. How would I even go about calculating return on invested capital for a company? So if you would like to calculate a company's return on invested capital, I recommend just using this basic formula where you take no pot in the numerator and then you have the average debt and equity, uh, the average debt and uh, stockholders uh, equity in the denominator. So let's do an example with that. Let's say there's a company called XYZ Industries. They had earnings before interest and taxes of $10 million. They had a tax rate of 25%. Uh, they, at the beginning of the period, they had debt and stockholders equity of 180 million. Then at the end of the period, it was 220 million. Okay, so that company, if we were gonna calculate their return on invested capital, you could see that their no pot is seven and a half million. Okay, because it's the basically the earnings before interest and taxes times one minus the tax rate, or we got this tax rate here. So 10 million times one minus 0.25 is seven and a half million, okay, for their no pat. And then in the denominator, we take the average debt and stockholders equity. We got 180 million plus 220 million. We divide that by two. So we get the average of 200 million for invested capital. So for that company, uh, you'd have 0 .03, uh, 0 0.0375 or 3.75% 
would be the return on invested capital for that hypothetical firm. Now, if you're wondering, what do we even do with that? What do we even care? Now that we know the return on invested capital is 3.75%, well, what McKinsey recommends is that you compare that to a measure like weighted average cost of capital. Okay, so the company's weighted average cost of capital, uh, you, you want the company to have a return on invested capital that is higher than the weighted average cost of capital. And if that's the case, so, so let's say in this case that the weighted average cost of capital for that company was 2%, and the return on invested capital is 3.75%, that means, according to McKinsey, this company is creating value. Okay, so they're creating value if the return on invested capital is higher than their weighted average cost of capital. But if that's not the case, so let's say that the weighted average cost of capital for this company here uh, was, uh, let's say, 10%, and then their return on invested capital is just 3.75%, McKinsey would say in that case, the company is not creating value uh, because actually their weighted average cost of capital is higher than the return on invested capital. So that company is actually destroying value.